What I'm going to talk about is how we try or may attempt to pull together what Paul is talking about at the level of households and communities and what Gill is talking about in terms of institutions. And it's framed within a context, as, as Derek introduced at the start, of transformational change. So um, the, the belief, or the increasingly recognised belief, that in order to address the threat of climate change seriously, to take the threat seriously and adequately address it, we don't need strategies that focus precisely on sort of climate resilience or climate proofing, but actually society as a whole needs to have a transformational change in order to address the, the nature and the degree of the threat. Um, just a couple of caveats. The first is that this, this pulls together some thinking that we have generated from some work for Rockefeller, some webinars we've done for Sea Change and, and for UNICEF. Um, and it's nothing more than some initial thinking and some ideas. So I would welcome, I think we'd all welcome, audience feedback on, on, on rea initial reactions, criticisms, um, where point, the point is in the right direction where some, some work might already have been and done on this. So, what I will start with is a, a diagram or sort of framework that lots of you might have seen already. It was produced by Nick Brooks and IED um, and funded by DFID. And it, um, it's been very influential as an attempt, a first attempt, to, co uh, to combine institutions and the people when we're looking at climate change. And although it's been very influential, um, frameworks for climate change m and &E still tend to focus on one track or the other. So you either get frameworks looking at climate risk management at, at the top level, looking top down, so from international and national in institutions downwards, that's called stream one on the left hand side. Or you get um, track two, the, down, the downstream, focusing on um, out, outputs and outcomes at the household community level and, and traditionally focusing on sort of keeping development on track through climate resilience and uh, climate proofing. What we believe, or what we see, is that there is um, currently a gap or a missing middle that links the two together. And we would propose or postulate that potentially a framework based around indicators of adaptive capacity for society, communities, households and individuals may fill that gap. And I think the first thing to say here is that we're talking about adaptive capacity in a broader sense, in a in, uh, shaped by transformational change, but at a societal level not, as traditionally has been the case, local adaptive capacity. So, if I wanted to set it out, our belief would be that combining upstream climate risk management and downstream development outcomes requires indicators of adaptive capacity at society, community, household and individual level. It is only through collective societal action to bring about transformative change um, required that climate change adaptation will be successful. And this ultimately comes down to adaptive capacity at all levels, not a dichotomy between climate risk management at the top and um, development outcomes at the bottom. And I've, I've tried to sort of, uh, at the risk of sort of overemphasizing the point, I've tried to translate this into a simple theory of change or narrative which states that climate change adaptation is complex, operating across multiple scales, sectors and involving multiple processes. The monitoring and evaluation of climate change adaptation revolves around how best to bring the people in at all levels. The one uniting factor is adaptive capacity for society, institutions, communities, households and individuals. So what would some indicators of adaptive capacity look like potentially? And I think when you look down the list what you can immediately see is they combine some of Gill's indicators around capacity and those sorts of things and what Paolo was talking around um, process indicators being the important thing for households and communities. Adaptive capacity is defi defined by Brooks again as capacity and preparedness to confront long-term adaptation issues at the institutional level and flexible resilient systems, institutions and governance 
that allow society to respond to climate change and to uncertain and evolving risks. So my question for you, and I will leave out there, is that do these indicators or concepts of adaptive capacity form the basis for a development of a set of indicators, baskets at different levels and across different sectors and contexts, um, that form the glue to link the upstream and the downstream? Um, and, and particularly, um, bring in the institutions at the top and the people at the bottom of the climate vulnerable poor. Certainly, and I've taken these indicators from some work by um, Jeff, um, you, can, you can see from within the indicators that they um, have many of the characteristics that are relevant and applicable across stakeholders and across scales. So, for example, accepting non-equilibrium talks about um, something that's widely acknowledged in the literature at the moment, which is the de declining sort of um, climatic baseline. We're actually operating in a context with, without a steady baseline, but where um, the, the climate is declining, so the challenge is getting um, worse all the time. Similarly, um, concepts around promoting, promoting diversity. And what I, what I sense with, from these indicators is that they are appropriate indicators, but they should be tailored or mean different things at different levels or to different stakeholders. So, for example, adopting multi-level perspectives at the level of, of a national institution and ministry charged with addressing climate change, that, that means addressing the, the perspectives of different stakeholders, having an ability to recognise that there will be winners and losers from climate change. Um, similarly, um, ensuring community involvement for local planners means that you could develop some indicators around lo local planning departments um, having, a, having a sense of or, or the extent to which communities are involved in the planning themselves. So where are we now? And I hope you can read the red, it wasn't the best choice of colour. Um, if, we, if we accept that community or society as a whole needs to develop the capacity to adapt, then we need to be able to evaluate this. In order, in order to address whether society as a whole is adapting to climate change. Frameworks currently, as far as I'm aware, focus on either the top, top-down or bottom-up approaches and nothing that joins the two together. I believe that M&E should not separate the two streams um, and there is currently a missing middle, assessing the adaptive capacity and behaviour of people in society. And, and a, a, a broader concept of adaptive capacity should focus around knowledge, attitudes and practices at a number of levels. So what, what I think we would like to do in the future is go off and explore some existing indicator frameworks. We, we, we sense that um, adaptive capacity may be the right concept, um, but, we, um, but we believe already there are indicators out there that can be adapted into concepts of adaptive capacity. So that's as far as I want to go. We'd we would really appreciate your comments, your initial reactions and those sorts of things.